This is a demo of the Altris AI system. I'm logged in and this is my home screen. From the home screen, you have the ability to filter by a lot of different factors. So you're gonna see all your patients listed here and you can filter by patient ID, patient name, birth date, gender, the last time it's uploaded, severity level, or the description. You also have the ability to choose additional filters up here, which you can sort by today, by range, as well as it sort by physician. Up here is our flagging system. Within the flagging system, what this allows me to do is create flags. Flags will identify patients that have certain features. So if I grab a new here, I can flag patients that have an RPE rupture. Uh, I could flag them with a subretinal space. And from there, I could exclude different biomarkers or additional options. And then I can name that flag and choose a color. This is constantly being updated, so there'll be new features in here soon. You can see I created a flag in here, temp. This is for any patient that has drusen. So when I click on this and hit apply, it's going to search through all the patients and it'll flag patients that have drusen within them. So this is great if you're looking for specific data or this could be on the fly, so it's always working. So if you create a specific flag to search for patients that would be good for a certain treatment or patients have particular uh, biology or pathologies, you'd be able to see that in real time as the patients are coming in. From here, I'm gonna go back into a patient. And so you can see, here's all my patients listed here. And I'm gonna clear this filter so that I see all my patients now, because that filter was only showing me patients, it, it had taken this list and only showed me the patients that were had that feature. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna click on this patient here. Here, really quickly, if there's pathology, red is severe, yellow is moderate, green means no. So when I go into this patient, you'll see over here, if they had a flag identified with them, you'll see what type of scan it is. This is a macular scan. We can look at optic disc scans and wide scans as well. When I click on this patient, it takes me right into them. The first thing you'll see here is our traffic light system. It's green, yellow, red. So it's gonna show you of the scans, how many are green, how many are moderate, and how many are severe. This is an example of a patient that doesn't have anything. So it's easy to quickly see that there's nothing going on with this patient and I can move on. But as I scroll down here, you'll also be able to see that we have the ability to do our own segmentation. We do our own segmentation for a bunch of different reasons. If you think about the OCT manufacturers that are out there right now, most of them use uh, a normative database that includes about 350 patients. Some of the OCT manufacturers may have a larger database. I, I understand that some are working on a larger database as well. But right now, the average is about 350 patients. Those patients are segmented by age, gender, and, the, and ethnicity. So what that means is when a patient comes in and has an OCT done, they're going to be looking at maybe two or three people out of that 350 that match that patient's gender, age, and ethnicity and compare them to that database to see if they're normal or not. What we've done instead is we've created our own segmentation and we're looking for pathology and biomarkers. So we've taken tens of thousands of labeled OCTs and fed them in using supervised machine learning to teach the algorithm to look for things. And so instead of looking for normal, we're looking for pathology and change and biomarkers. You can see here, I can look at thickness map. I can come down here as well, and I can look at the thickness between different layers or single layers. A lot of information here, as well as I can turn on and off or look at individual segmentation. This Ultras logo is always my home button. So whenever I'm in any patient, I can click here and it'll take me back to the main screen. From this point, I can grab a patient that does have pathology. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna grab another patient. When I select that patient, you'll see they have more exams. You'll see that that temp flag is showing that they've got patients with Jerusalem. You'll also see the date of those exams. I'm gonna click right here. That's gonna take me in. And what you'll notice now is here's the traffic light system, green, yellow, red. So I can see really quickly, here's the scans that are yellow. Here's the scans are red. It gives me a key here of what's going on. From this point, I can come over to this next tab, which is pathology detection. Pathology detection has a lot of information for you. The first thing is this referral urgency score. Now this can be turned on or off. So if you wanna use it, you can. If not, you can go up here into your settings and you can disable it. The referral urgency score works on a weighted average. And so what that means is it takes all the pathology and biomarkers it identifies, and those are given a score. So an example would be, a floater might be a one and a detached retina might be a nine. And it's gonna take an average of that and use that to determine if a referral is needed. You'll see down here, these are all the class of, all the segmentations that we've identified. We even have a Drusen count right here, showing what we've identified. And then over here, you're gonna get a classification. Now it's really important to understand that Altris AI does not diagnose. 
we are a decision support tool. So what we're designed to do is give you as much information as possible, but it's still the provider's responsibility to decide if they agree, disagree, and what they believe they see. There's a lot of AIs out there. A lot of the newer AIs are autonomous, and the autonomous AIs using the US FDA system are designed to replace physicians. Their goal is to identify if you have pathology or not. One of the downsides of those is that they're only looking for one pathology. So they're looking for, an example would be, they're looking for diabetic retinopathy. So a patient is being scanned for diabetic retinopathy. The AI will identify yes or no to that, but it'll ignore if they have AMD if, or if they have glaucoma or other pathologies because it's only allowed to look for that one pathology. Now, I think there's some really great AIs and I think they're doing a fantastic job and they've got a purpose. We've just taken a different approach for a different audience. And from that perspective, what we're doing here is showing you as much information as possible and allow you to make that decision. So again, I can turn these on or off. So I can turn on different uh, identifications and then I can zoom in here and I can turn them on and use it for patient education. I can scroll through the OCT and see how things change. I also have a report system. From here, I can click on this report button and we can generate a lot of different reports. So this is our standard report. We have our standard plus report, which shows more information. Our advanced report, again, more information. You have the ability to do a progression report showing change. And then we have custom reports that you can generate on your own, picking different parameters. So if I wanted to add just this view to a report, I would click here and it would go in uh, to the report system. Once I've looked at this tab, I'm gonna move all the way over here to pathology progression. When I go into pathology progression, you can have up to eight exams right here. And so what I've got right now, as you can see, there's a little bit of red and there's more red. So obviously I can see there's change between these visits. If I scroll down, and if I wanted to add more visits, I could just clicking here and you would pick if, it different, if additional exams existed, I could click and add those in. Like I said, you could have up to eight. As I scroll down though, what you'll see now is these are all the biomarkers and pathologies for this patient. You can see the change. So for Hardrusen, it's up 76%. For uh, interretinal hyperreflective, there's up 64%. I also have the ability to search in here. So if I want to search for Drusen, I can look at Confluent Drusen. When I click on that, now I can look at the ONFOS area or volume. I can see numerical values for those uh, different areas. I can also see it graphed. And I can look at ONFOS or volume. I also have the ability right here, as I scroll up, to look at geographic area progression, where it's going to show me all the different uh, information about this patient. And you'll see here, if I go all the way to the bottom, you'll actually be able to see it graphed and see change as it's graphed. And see additional information of what's going on. This is a demo system, so not all the information is perfect. It's there to give you an idea of what we're doing. As I go all the way back here to the top, I, I can look at that as uh, fluid volume as well. At this point, I'm gonna click this Alters button. Remember, that always takes me home. And from here, I'm actually gonna change and go into a glaucoma patient. Patient. So I'm gonna go up to this glaucoma patient right here. You can see here, it's a macular scan. It shows that they've got some drusen in those scans. Now, when I go into this one, again, I've got that same traffic light system. You can see there's some stuff going on, but I also have this glaucoma risk analysis now. When I go into this, I now have the ability to look at ganglion cell symmetry by hemisphere and see if there's something going on. I can add an additional eye right here if I wanna look at two eyes side by side. You can see uh, glaucoma alert. As I look down here, I can see additional information as well as I can look at multiple exams over time down here, looking at glaucoma from a macula perspective. I also have the ability at the bottom if I want to is I can add an IOP pressures and graph those to correlate. Going back up here to the top, I'm going to go home again by clicking on the Alters button. When I go home, I'm going to grab another patient. Recently, we've updated our system to allow a new type of technology. So you'll see now that there's an optic disc scan and a wide scan. When I go into the wide scan, again, I've got all the same functionality I've shown you before, except now I'm looking at the optic disc and the macula at the same time. And I've got this new button over here called optic disc analysis. When I click on this, you'll now be able to see what we are using, which is called DDLS, the Dish Damage Likelihood Scale, which takes all of these factors into account and creates a score. You'll see I can look at both eyes here. If I want to remove one, I can do that. And if I want to put it back in, I click Add Fellow Eye, click whichever exam I want to compare it to. 
and add that in. And so now I can look at these side by side again. As I scroll down, when you hover over these information, it'll tell you more information about how we've come up with the disk damage likelihood scale. In fact, if you come right here and you click on this, it actually gives you details of how we created that score and what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hide that now. Down here at the bottom, just like a lot of the other patients I've been showing you, I can see change over time. Now, this is a demo system, and so there's some parameters in here that are showing positive, which uh, normally they wouldn't, but because it's a demo system with demo data, you're going to see a little bit of uh, unique things in here. I can look at either eye this way as well. Now I'm going to scroll back up to the top. I'm going to hit my home button. And from this point, what I'm going to do is show you a couple more features. So we have the ability right here to click on this button and go to team members. With this, I can add in additional users that are using the system, as well as I can see how many exams they've done. This is great if you have like referring doctors. So if you have people referring into you, you can use this to have uh, that referring physician be able to upload images, have the AI review it before they send them over. You'll also see over here all the education, onboarding, and how to get a hold of support. I'm going to click on this home button again. There's a lot more to the Ultras AI platform. This is just a brief overview to show you some of the different features and functionality of what we're doing with the system.